Honey, where'd you put my charger? It's on the counter where you left it. <laughs> What's that? I've got it right here, honey. Did you get your jacket from the dryer? Yes, I did. Good. Thank you. Daddy, come here. She is still feverish. She keeps getting sick. This is ridiculous. I know, I know. I'm taking her to the doctor today. Let's see what happens. No. Oh. Let me go say goodbye to her. Okay. How's it going, kiddo? Well, you gotta get better here so you can take care of your mom while I'm away. Daddy, please don't leave me. I'm sick and I don't want you to go. It's okay, baby. Daddy's gonna go to work. But I'll be calling and checking on you all the time, I promise. But you have to stay and take care of me. Your mom's gonna take great care of you. And I'll be back before you know it. Besides, you're gonna be busy with school and cheerleading, and you're not even gonna know I'm gone. That's a silly thing to say. Of course I'll know you're gone. I know, I know. You need to get your rest. You don't wanna go get yourself all upset. It's gonna be hard for you to get better. Come here, give me a hug. Promise you'll come back? I promise. I'll be back before you know it. Now you be good, okay? Yes. I love you. I love you, Daddy. Okay, honey, I gotta take off. Come on, get to your phone call. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Careful. I will. Oh, you getting big, boy. Don't get too big while I'm going, okay? I love you. Love you too. Hey, sir. Take care of Janelle while I'm going. I will. Love you. But I don't want Daddy to go. Careful, okay? I will. Are you gonna call me from the airport? I will. Oh, good luck on your test, okay? You are going to nail it. Wait. Um, here. What is this? Just, uh, just open on the bus. What? Just go, alright? I love you. Drop something. Oh, 
this was his father's watch. <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna cry. Looks like you're catastrophizing. Hey. I can see your wheels turning. Just tell me what you're thinking. It's my wife. I can't get in contact with my wife. I'm worried. She usually answers the phone when I call. I get it. But if you let anxiety get the best of you, you won't be able to accurately assess the situation and deal with it. Can I offer a suggestion? Sure. What if we went through some scenarios as to why your wife hasn't answered the phone? Let's see if that helps put things in perspective. Okay. So you've been catastrophizing for a while. I'm sure your brain's gone to the worst possible scenario. That's an understatement. What's the worst thing you imagine? Worst thing? Yeah. Well, my wife, she had to take Chris to basketball. She hates driving on Route 8. You know, I mean, it's really dark. Well, what if she hit a deer? I mean, what, what if she got hurt? such a bad place. Look, I don't want to think about my family like this. No, of course. I know this is not something that may necessarily come natural to you, but I want you to generate the best possible scenario as to why Janelle didn't answer the phone. Best possible. Yeah. The most amazing, positive thing in the world that you could be doing right now even if it sounds outrageous, but it's so great you can't answer the phone. Think about it. Just really imagine it. Okay. You just won a million dollars! Oh my God! <laughs> How likely is that? <laughs> it's not very likely, no. but it'd be nice. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Now look, we just jolted you out of catastrophic thinking, and you're already more calm. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. much better. Oh, good. Now, why don't we identify what the most likely scenario is? 
the most realistic reason why she's not answering the phone. She's always got those damn headphones on. That's more like it. She's probably just listening to music or something like that. That is the most realistic possibility. <laughs> How do you feel? <sighs> Much better. Hmm. Yeah. That a boy. And now why don't you get some sleep? You got a big day tomorrow. Give a call tomorrow. I'm sure everything's fine. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to MRT training. In this lesson, lesson number eight, we'll be talking about a skill called Put It In Perspective, or PIP for short. And this is a skill that you'll learn to use for when your mind is filled with catastrophic thoughts. And I'll define that for you in a minute. Some of you probably know what I'm already talking about. Now, we just got these worst case catastrophic zooming around in our minds right these these thoughts so in this skill you learn how you can stop all of that catastrophizing thoughts that are happening and it'll build the competency of optimism because when you learn this we want to make sure that you understand which competencies we are building so pip builds optimism now let's talk about catastrophizing catastrophizing is when you waste critical energy Thinking about worst case outcomes, things that have a zero 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 keep on going, point one probability of happening. You know, you might say this stuff isn't going to happen, but your mind is consumed by it. Your mind is filled with these catastrophic thoughts, these doom and gloom thoughts where all your energy is going to and what you're not doing is purposeful action. Now, the goal of the skill is not to get rid of anxiety completely. We'll talk about that when you catastrophize. What happens in your body is that you start being sort of filled with anxiety. And you know by now that sometimes some anxiety is a good thing, right? Some. It motivates you. It keeps you alert and focused. So we don't want to get rid of anxiety completely, right? But we got to take the edge off or lower that anxiety so that you're able to engage with whatever it is right there in front of you that needs your attention. Now, don't misinterpret what I said, okay? Too much anxiety can be bad, yes, but some is good. Now, there are three different styles of catastrophic thinking. And as we go through them, think about which style you tend to lead towards. Some of you will find that one of these styles really matches the way you can you can uh, catastrophize when you fall into this style of thinking. So the first one is called downward spiral. Now let's imagine that you just found out that you need to meet with your, I don't know, let's, let's say you need to meet up with your leadership at the end of the day, your chain of command. In the downward spiral, the news that you found out that you had to go and meet up with your chain of command at the end of the day is the trigger. And now your mind is like a runaway train. Or in other words, your mind is racing through all these terrible thoughts and it just gets worse and worse. And you think about what's going to happen because you have to meet with your chain of command at the end of the day. So maybe you say to yourself, oh, I'm in trouble, right? Or, <laughs> you know, I'm going to get an ARC 15, right? Um, even though you didn't do anything, but that kind of that kind of thinking does happen and, and you know it's true or i'm getting released from my position or my wife or significant other is going to leave me if i get in trouble one more time right because there's there's many soldiers in those situations sometimes 
And so your brain just creates this ever increasing worst story. That's called a downward spiral. And a lot of us get caught in that type of thinking quite often. Now, the second style of catastrophic, uh, c- catastrophic thinking is called scattershot. Now, scattershot is a little different. Let's imagine that you've been trying to reach your loved one about their car's extended warranty. I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> let's just say you've been trying to reach your loved one and you've been calling and calling. In a scattershot style of catastrophizing, your brain or your mind sort of just shoots up all these random terrible thoughts. It's just a bunch of disconnected but equally horrible things. For example, you might be, or for example, you might think, oh, they might be in a dire emergency. Maybe they're face down in a ditch somewhere, or maybe they left me and I won't ever see them again. And so, There are these disconnected but equally negative or catastrophic outcomes. So that's scattershot. We we got down we got downward spiral, uh, which is ever increasing story, and we got scattershot, which is still really bad stuff, but it's basically scattered or not in a story form. And so now the third one is called circling. Circling is different from the first two, right? So Let's say you have a brief that you need to deliver and you keep saying to yourself, I'm not going to be able to pull this brief. There's no way I'll be able to deliver effectively. I'm not going to be able to pull it off. And you keep saying that over and over to yourself. That's called circling. You just go around and around in your mind. Now, let's talk about these three for a minute. When... When you're in a downward spiral, the runaway train or this story that you're creating, and that story is powerful, your body reacts as if all those what ifs, I mean, that's all it is. It's a bunch of what ifs. But your body reacts as if those what ifs are happening now. This could certainly make you feel anxious and panic. Adrenaline can also kick in, right? And so many other things just like it. And so you start to feel in many other similar ways. And so downward spiral and scattershot are very similar in that way. Some other examples, high anxiety. Okay, notice how I said high anxiety. Uh, Distracted, non-focused thoughts, heart pounding, sweaty palms. All of those things can kick in. And circling... In circling, it can be a little different. The anxiety is not quite as high in the circling because those thoughts are not as catastrophic. But you're still not acting. You're you're caught in that loop, in that cycle of thinking. And that cycle of thinking is preventing you from preparing you for the brief and being ready to send it. So those are the three. And just know that all three styles prevent purposeful action. Now, you may be pacing when experiencing one of these styles, which is technically action, yes, but it isn't purposeful action. And these are times something triggered this thinking in in you. These are times in you should be taking action. Because of these styles of thinking, we tend to not more than often. All right, let's just be really clear that catastrophic thinking is is different than contingency planning you all know that we have to contingency plan you have to anticipate what are some likely negative outcomes or problems that could occur and what is my course of action or your course of action if that does indeed happen so contingency planning is a great thing the problem with catastrophizing is that it blocks contingency planning. Now let's go over what you can do when you're catastrophizing. So we know that when people catastrophize, they feel miserable or they start to panic. They're not contingency planning. So what should we do to get out of these type of thinking? We put it in perspective or PIP for short. So when you see someone panicking, tell them just PIP and chill, bro. (laughs) Okay, Uh, but then they might look at you weird and be like, well, what do you mean? (laughs) Okay, so step one, 
describe the activating event. Just like anything else we've been going over, let's just describe this trigger. What triggered this catastrophizing? Step two is capture worst case thoughts. Those catastrophic, irrational thoughts that are zooming around in our mind, causing us all sorts of suffering, and list them down on a piece of paper. And the reason you write these down on a piece of paper is because mentally, when you write them down on a paper, it gives you that that little that extra space i guess sort of you can say like it just gives you this extra space between you and your thoughts like okay so that's what triggered it or all right so this is what i'm really thinking about okay uh so that's why you mentally you write them down and what it does it mentally creates this extra space between you and your thoughts step three generate best case thoughts you know the most positive outcomes that could happen and spend a couple minutes generating those best case thoughts. This also helps generate a sense of relief. And so before we move on to the next two, think of the first three as your left and right limits. You're weighing the negative with the positives, which then leads us to our next step. Step four, identify most likely outcomes. Now we're doing the heavy lifting. After you capture worst case and generated best case thoughts, now identify what is the most likely outcomes your leadership or chain of command wants to see you for. Last step. Step five, develop a plan for dealing with the most likely outcomes. Because this is partly a contingency plan, now you're planning for all of those most likely outcomes, whether they're positive or negative. Once you go through all of these steps, Next thing you know, all your leadership wanted to know was uh, or had for you was a simple question about your weekend or maybe you have extra duty for failure at a task, right? <laughs> but either way, you were ready for whatever was to come up. And again, you know, simple but yet very effective practices you can use on a daily basis, which I have and honestly works. Um you know, and so I'd like to thank everybody for participating and really um, all of your feedback from from some of you and uh, letting me know how things are going. I'm always available. Um, but without further ado, we'll continue on to the next lessons. Look at me.